today up here in Island Park they had a fat bike summit over on Sawtail Resort and I dropped in to take a look at these bikes it's the first time I've seen them and they're uh, kind of a hybrid of a mountain bike uh, with uh, some interesting components uh, the, the most noticeable being obviously they have really wide tires they're designed for uh, real low air pressure, uh, five to seven pounds, so that uh, they can actually uh, travel on snow. And they uh, followed the uh, snowmobile trails and did a uh, 25K ride this morning. Are you ready for the race? Oh, I'm fired up. Cool. It's good <laughs> weather, about the right temperature, isn't oh, it? yeah. I'll go wherever they want to go. Yeah, nice saddle height too. <laughs> How's it going? It's going good. How about yourself? Good. Ready for a good little race? Um, hopefully everyone's gotten the word by now. Uh, no one's doing the 60K. I'm not going to stop you from doing it. Uh, if you do head on out there, just let someone know. We'll see you tonight. <laughs> now again, keep your lights on, especially today. Uh, have them blinking along or something. Especially little, can't really see too much. There's probably going to be a lot of snow machiners coming out of the woodwork in the surrounding areas. Uh, so we'll see that trailhead probably pretty packed on our way out. So uh, just be cautious all day long, and uh, have a lot of fun. Thanks. Hey, Jay. Jay. Awesome. Yes. Just a quick question. So general etiquette standards for fat bike riding will apply today, and we want to make sure that we stay to the right whenever possible, especially around corners. Try to ride in single file as much as you can, especially around corners. If you hear snowmobiles coming, they do have the right of way, so try to pull off for them. Especially if you hear a bunch of snowmobiles coming, it's best to get off the trail. And just let them go by. They're, they're by quickly. You can hear them coming from a long way away. Um, hand signals are great to use. So snowmobilers will come at you and they'll raise their arm. And they'll let you know how many people are behind them in their group. If you see a fist up, that means they're the last one. They're all done. And then however, numbers, however many numbers they show on their fingers is how many more snowmobilers are hey, we're going to do a neutral rollout. Um, <laughs> we want to thank the Forest Service over there. Thanks for being here. spread the word that we're uh, on the short course and the communication chain will go down the road and let everyone know that's awesome. Up. I'm Greg Patterson with Surly Bikes out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and today we're in beautiful Island Park, Idaho uh, for the Fat Bike Summit and uh, Fat Bike Race that we held today, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of our bikes that we make. Surly Bikes has been around for 13 or 14 years, and about five years ago, one of our designers, Dave Gray, had kind of become enamored with this idea of a bike that you could really ride in the snow a lot. And he'd seen a lot of builders building these bikes, um, custom, like in their garage, but he wanted to take it to a different level. So um, way back when Dave designed, or, or a group of engineers, designed our first fat bike called the Pugsley. Um, this is sort of the new version of a Pugsley. Uh, it sort of embodies what a fat bike is. The idea behind a fat bike is that you can essentially run a large 3.7 inch tire and a wider than normal, like a 65 millimeter rim to achieve flotation and traction in situations where you normally couldn't on a bicycle. 
Um, so the idea behind these is like, let's get out and ride our bikes in places we never thought possible. So that's sort of where we start. The idea behind the bike uh, is pretty simple. Not a lot of big changes from your, your average ordinary mountain bike. Um, we use most of all of the same components, steel frame. Uh, if you look back here, we've got just a standard stock DR drivetrain and a Truvative crank. And we're running Avid BB7 disc brakes and micro shift thumb shifters. Now a lot of people are not used to these shifters, but the reason we expect these is because your standard or your traditional rapid fire shifter on a mountain bike would freeze up in weather like this. So these are completely mechanical, nothing can go wrong. They're friction and index capable, um, so we want to make sure that if you get out into the back country that you can also get back home. So I showed you the Pugsley, which is the, the 65 millimeter rim and a 3.7 inch tire. We thought that was fantastic, uh, but certainly is always pushing the envelope, wanting to do things different, uh, new and changing and just kind of pushing the boundaries of what a bike can be. Um, so last year we introduced our Moonlander. Uh, the Moonlander is essentially the big brother to the Pugsley. We're running these huge 100 millimeter rims, so your rim goes from like yay wide to about this big. Uh, you can probably get a close up shot if you wanted to. And also a 4.7 inch tire, so wider tire, more flotation, more traction, and more bone crushing power! Now the Moonlander is different from a Pugsley in that we had to make um, some changes to the frame in order to fit this much rim and this much tire. Uh, so, actually a great place to look is in the rear. And you'll notice that the frame is offset. This is a 28 millimeter offset rim and, the, and what this does for us, it allows us to use the 135 millimeter hub that you probably have on your mountain bike at home. And, and, and also, uh, it, it allows us to run a disc brake and a drivetrain. But uh, what we have to do is essentially move everything over a little bit so we can squeeze this tire into this, uh, into this frame. So a few concessions had to be made to, to make this thing work. Uh, we also put an offset crank. So moving your crank outboard just a little bit to give you more clearance so we don't uh, hit the frame set or the tire when you're pedaling, because that's always a bummer. <laughs> so no chain rub for, for this big guy. Another thing that's really nice about having these big tires and these big rims uh, with really nice bead locks on them is that you can run your tires down to pressures as low as 7 PSI, or I've heard some people even run 5. Um, what that does for you in soft conditions gives you a lot of hookup, a lot of traction, because your tire then flattens out under the weight of your body, and essentially all of the trail is eaten up right underneath you and allows you to glide over anything in your path for the most part. So we make Moonlander and Pugsley in a 14 inch, a 16 inch, an 18 inch, a 20 inch, a 22 inch, and now a 24. So we have, we essentially have a bike that will fit just about anybody from, from even kids on up to, you know, the guys who are, well, a lot of guys that work at Surly are really tall, so 6'8". And, and how do you decide what size frame you want? Um, well, I would always recommend that if you're going to buy a new bicycle, go to your bike shop have a conversation with your local bike shop, ask them what they suggest for you, um, because people are different. So if you're, gonna, if you're gonna shop for a bike, make sure that you're shopping for a bike um, and using all of your resources. So find an expert, because uh, I'm not gonna tell you how to size yourself, nice try. <laughs> Another cool thing that's developing is uh, the, the parts and accessories uh, for fat bikes are really starting to explode lately. Um, one of the biggest things that you'll see with a lot of, well, a lot of folks now are we're using frame bags because in the back country, a lot of folks don't want to carry a lot of weight on their backs. We're, we're carrying cargo inside the frame, so it's out of the way of your knees. It's low to the ground, so it's very stable, and it allows you to carry a lot more stuff than you could in a normal backpack. Um, we always suggest that if you're out on the trails, if you're running a, a nice headlight, um, I like the rechargeable lights. Uh, they, they, they tend to work a little better and have a little more power. Um, and then always have a rear blinky light so the people out on the trails can see you. Um, Another thing that people are making that I don't actually have right now, there's pogies. So a pogie is essentially a glove that fits over your handlebar. So instead of having to wear your, your big lobster claws, you can wear a liner glove in the winter, you know, in temperatures as low as negative uh, 20 with, with your big pogie. So it's, uh, it makes for a more comfortable ride when you're, you're kind of like out there, you know. So the, the best part about riding a fat bike is riding your bike, like I said before, in places where you normally couldn't ride your bike. Um, places like this, snowmobile trails. Um, one of the things that I really like that's a, a good secret is riding these in sand or really slushy conditions um, down on riverbanks. Uh, just really close to my house there's a place where we go, we ride, and it's flooded every year and it's full of sand and your average bike just wouldn't cut it. 
Uh, you strap on a 3.8 inch tire and you can roll through just about anything. Um, a lot of folks like to take trips to Alaska and ride on those rocky coastlines. Uh, these are great bikes for crawling through rocks and they're really the only comfortable ride, uh, bike to ride in those kinds of situations. Um, but sand, mud, rocks, uh, snow like we're in today, uh, they're all sort of within reach with a fat bike. Uh, so if you haven't ridden one, I highly encourage you find a demo place, talk to your local bike shop, and get take a spin. And what bike would you recommend? I would recommend anything that says Surly on it. Yeah, slippery medium. <laughs> it's, uh, good for your traction though. Yeah.